Okay, I'm right back with part two of inspecting a truck. Uh, we call it inspecting a truck for repair or inspecting a truck just to inspect it. <laughs> but anyway, the end goal is to make a truck uh, work good and save money. And one of the last things I said in, in uh, installment one is uh, the uh, time. It takes me approximately eight hours to fully rebuild a worn um, scroll chuck. And you just have to decide what your time's worth an hour versus uh, the price of a new chuck, whether you want to do that. And uh, I kind of found that uh, uh, it was more economical for me to repair trucks than to buy new ones. I haven't bought very many new trucks in my lifetime. So, um, okay, let's talk about the repair a little bit here and inspection. So I was talking about a, a quick rehash of how uh, uh, when you adjust a pinion, it's a gear and it pushes this gear away. And it pushes the scroll into the thrust pads on the front half of the chuck. So, after years of use, and these things are just surprisingly durable, the scroll starts cocking on its pivot and digging in to the uh, thrust faces here, and it gets sloppy. And these scrolls are so hard, I haven't really found a problem with them wearing. That was, you know, uh, this uh, little six jaw had a bit of wear on the scroll, but it still works good. Okay. So what you do to fix this is, uh, I can, I, I've showed you that I can do these things uh, in the jig bore with those fancy heads, but... You don't need that. The way I would do it, and the way I've done it, and the way I'm gonna, I'm gonna demonstrate one too, because I got this eight inch truck over here, is you put this front part on a face plate, and then you resurface, get it running true, check it internally, externally, everywhere, and, and use your best judgment of getting it running true and uh, re-machine these thrust faces. And uh, there's usually, see, there's quite a bit of uh, um, relief here. So, so you take and machine that true. Now, to fix the pivot, I can, I can show that pretty easy, I think, with this right here. I'll probably have to Hold on, I forgot to get the uh, key for that. I'll grab it right behind you. Okay, we'll get, uh, we'll get that up a little bit. Okay, this is that six draw chuck here. And I can show you real easy how I repaired it. I'll get the jaws, whoops, <laughs> that's okay. Get the jaws out of that. Actually, I, I think I can just get the jaws most of the way back and you can see what I did. Very simple. Now this, I did a demo on this chuck in a video and I ran it at 2000 RPMs and it let go of what was in it. So you got to be aware of chucks, you know. There's not very much material in the, in the front of a small six jaw and there's a big difference between a six inch buck and the next size up big difference in as far as how strong they are okay let's look here you can see right here i put a bronze bushing and i use bronze because that's what i had that was that size usually you put this in a face plate, get it running true, and bore uh, and uh, cut it. 
you know, turn it. I usually turn it with a boring bar because it gets in there. Turn that down and then, then sleeve it with a piece of pipe. And what I do is I turn that down, leave it in the face plate, and then heat up that piece of pipe and slip it on. Do a little shrink fit. Let that cool down and then turn it so you have that uh, two thousandths clearance. And you don't want to get too much more, uh, less than two thousandths. Because I tell you what, the chuck gets really hard to turn. Okay, so let's just call it an ideal 2000s. Now, okay, so we got to have 2000s clearance on the front and the back. So we clean this up, and to measure it, let's see, what did I do with that gizmo right there? <laughs> <laughs> I think I have everything here, but there's so much I need to, to get. Now, this is a secret box, and it's got a special tool in there, see? I bet not very many people know what that does there. I'll show it someday. <laughs> but right over here, I have some fine, hard lead wire. Now, what you're going to have to do nowadays is find some a uh, very fine solder, okay? Then you take a, a strip of that and you set it on top of the scroll and you, you know, bolt the chuck back together. And then you measure the thickness of that piece of lead that you had going across there and that gives you your end play. It, and the end play will be too much. So at that point, you start taking the material off these this face here and start and this face equal amounts and you start squeezing the halves together see what I mean you start squeezing them together and that's how you take the in play out so it's not, I, I guess what I'm trying to tell you here, to repair the chuck, it doesn't require extreme precision. It can be done on the faceplate of the lathe if, um, uh, if it'll fit, you know, if, if it'll fit. Now I'm going to use, um, let me get this off here. As I wrap this video up, uh, this chuck here is a Monarch chuck, and I've used it for 20 years, and it's getting tired, and it's not repeating. I've ground the jaws, I think, three times in 20 years, and I've used this quite a bit. Um, so I'm going to have to, um, and I inspect it, you know, and I think it's got three and a half thousandths uh, play on the scroll. And I can't get the thing to repeat better than like two, maybe three. And so it's time, okay? It's time on it. it it's time uh, to repair it. And uh, it'll take me eight hours to do it. I'll use that faceplate. That's why that faceplate is there. The lathe will repair itself. <laughs> Keep that in mind. And if you own a Monarch 10 E, especially, folks, it's a tool making lathe. Come on, make stuff with it. Fix your tools. <laughs> That's it. Oh, I got, a, I got another little thing on uh, six jaw chucks. I tell you what, I've got a lot of experience with six jaw chucks. <laughs> This one here was really, really warm, and it was tossed out at a, at a, at a big operation. And you can see here, it, it was in Department 841. There are animals there. <laughs> but it was, on a, it was on a dividing head, and it was just used so extremely much that it wore the pinion hole here and that pinion slopped back and forth 
And since it's split here, I don't know if you can see, but I sleeved that pinion. It's got a sleeve there. Yeah, and, and it fit and it's tight. See, this thing was shot. It was garbage, but it's a great chuck. Just don't run it over 2000 RPMs. <laughs> the, the newer chucks, you know, uh, to be fair, this is kind of a lower grade of semi steel or high grade cast iron. Well, the, the new ones are forged steel. But uh, if this chuck can be saved, any chuck can be saved. So uh, I, I hope I made sense out of this. And uh, um, I'll refer back to this video, um, the inspection part here, when um, I get on to that. Um, fixing that, Chuck. Uh, I, I want you to know that uh, all these videos I'm doing has benefited me from the beginning. I get my machines in great condition along the way. Okay, I'll be back. Thanks for tuning in today. Have a good afternoon.